gives me a lot of pride to hear about my grandfather Zeus and to know what he did and to hear people talk about him that I don't even know them. You know, I've never met them in my life and they tell me stories about him. Your grandfather saved my life. My, my father's told me that a lot of times when he was younger, people used to come up, come, come up to him and tell him, if it wasn't for your grandfather, I wouldn't be alive. And to have that, it motivates me to, to, be the best, to be the best person I can be, to be the best soldier I can be, to do whatever I can. And it, it definitely, definitely makes me proud to be a Belsky. So my grandfather and his whole family are from Belarusia. And during the Holocaust, when the Nazis invaded, they destroyed the village, killed their parents, killed one of their brothers. And my grandfather and his brother, they knew they needed to act, they needed to do something. So they decided they'd, they'd run to the forest and they would help other Jews escape. Part of what they did was to rescue Jews, but my grandfather, who personally lost both his parents, his brother, and his wife and child, didn't think it was enough. So he, he really wanted to get revenge. And because of them, at the end of the war, 1,200 Jews walked out safe, and now there are tens of thousands of Jews that are alive today because of them. It all started with me, with my brother, when I saw that he came here and joined the army. And the second Le Lebanon war started. I was in school, I was in college in New York, and I don't know, I, I couldn't live with myself. I couldn't live with myself just, just being there and not helping. So I finished school a year early, planned on, on drafting. I went over, me and my cousin both went over together, and I went straight into the army without knowing any Hebrew. <laughs> my whole family motivates me to be, the best, to be the best soldier I can be, to fight for Israel. To give my whole, to give anything that, that Israel needs, to go as far as I can. Being in the Israeli paratroopers is, is something very special. It's like you have a bond with everyone. You're all, you're on it together. Everyone in this unit wants wants to give something to Israel. They want to be, they want to be a, loche, a fighter, and they, <laughs> and they want to protect the country. And you go through so much together in training, where you don't sleep and you don't eat and you. You go on long hikes and stuff, and you do it together. That's the most important thing is you do it together with your friends. And you really feel at home here. As a lone soldier, we get a lot of things from the friends of the IDF. We get vouchers that we could spend anywhere we want, basically, in the country, which is really nice. You buy some clothes, anything. It's, it's really nice on a holiday to get a gift, something like that. And uh, it's really important for me to, to appreciate where it's coming from, that we know where it's coming from, from the friends of the IDF. I happened to get a, a gold pin for a most excellent soldier in my uh, battalion. And I'm proud of that. I think that it, uh, my brother also got it when he was in, in the paratroopers. And uh, I'm proud of it. It makes me, it makes me proud. I, I think I got it because I, I helped to push everyone to the limit. And uh, I pushed my, my whole, all my friends as, as far as they could go. I pushed myself as far as I can go. And I think that's the reason why I got it. And uh, I think my grandfather would be proud. Being a lone soldier is definitely difficult. I mean, we, there are a lot of disadvantages to it. We have to make, come here and make our own friends, do our own thing, do our own laundry, figure out what we're going to do about meals. So when, when I come back from the army, I go to the kibbutz. And as much as I don't have my own family there, I have an adoptive family that they take care of me. I go, I go to them for Shabbat dinner. We have a good time together. They offer to do my laundry, even though I don't really feel comfortable making them do it. And uh, it's really nice to have them. I miss my whole family, but you know, they understand why I'm here and they support me for being here, they're proud of me. And they come visit me all the time too, it gives them an excuse to take off of work and come to Israel, so it's not too bad. I feel very proud when I leave my base in my uniform and everybody sees you walking around in uniform and they know you're, you're an Israeli paratrooper, you're, you're fighting for this country. But I'm, I'm only one person, I'm only, I'm only one person from a whole legacy of fighters. But it's not just me, to see to see all these, all these other Americans or foreigners from all over the world coming over to fight for Israel, it motivates everyone else, it motivates all the Israelis around you. And they see, wow, this kid gave everything up to come here and he's giving it his all, so maybe I'll also give it my all. And it, it motivates everyone, I think. I think the phrase never again is something that I've heard throughout my life. Through, from my grandfather when I was young, my grandmother, my father, the phrase never again has always stuck with me. It's always been a phrase to me that even when times get tough, I always think about it, never again. And it brings me back to why I'm here, why I believe 
why I care so much about Israel. And I think about the Holocaust and I think about what happened there. And uh, the phrase never again definitely motivates me when times get hard. And I really do believe in it, never again, it will never happen again as long as we, as long as we fight.